The embed kit provides all the hardware and parts for installing the Buchla Program Manager into your easel command or module. It puts the controls and screen in place of the card interface and mounts the card to the main board of the Easel 208C. When embedded, the screen is easier to read and the lower profile makes it ideal for packing up for performances. There are several steps and small parts, so this procedure may not be for everyone. What follows is a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install the program manager into your instrument. First, let's look at the parts in the kit. The switchboard gives you access to the selectors and USB connection. The top frame keeps everything looking tidy. The ribbon cable provides a USB connection from the switchboard to the daughter board. This small piece makes it so that the switchboard and frame can fill the entire gap and mount with the screws from the program manager interface. You will also find the faceplate used for embedding into the easel's I.O. module. You don't need it for the easel command. Finally, this bag of hardware has all the fasteners for putting things together. We recommend emptying it into a small cup or dish so the pieces don't jump around and fall on the floor. There are two nuts that are not used for the easel command installed, but are used for the I.O. module. You can put these aside. Finally, you'll need a couple tools. A precision Phillips head screwdriver, which you can test the size with on these exposed screws. A 3 16th inch driver is used for the nuts. If you only have metric, a 5mm might do, but it will be a bit large. You can use pliers, but it's not ideal. The first step is to separate the two panels of the program manager card. You'll need to use the screwdriver to remove these three screws. Keep your dish handy so you don't lose all the hardware. You'll be needing these screws later. Once the screws are gone, we can remove the faceplate. Then we'll separate the two boards. Start at the small header and get a little movement going to loosen it. Now move to the larger headers and start to loosen and pry those apart. You'll need to be careful as there's a ribbon cable connecting these two halves. Now that these are separated, we want to remove the ribbon cable from the main board. Do not remove it from the screen as small parts are more easily lost from that side. A firm grip and a slight tug will remove the display cable. Next, we'll remove the screen. But before we do that, let's practice putting the display cable into the receiver. It's better to get used to it now as it's easier to do. Keep the shiny contacts up, not the blue side. Pinch the cable firmly and find the display cable contacts up label. This is where you'll insert it, not the side with the visible wires. Get a corner started and rock it back and forth gently. Push it in and you'll feel it go in. When you can't see any more silver on the cable, you'll know the connection is complete. Now we'll remove it again and get started on removing the screen. There are four nuts to remove with the driver. There are also four small nylon washers under these nuts, so be careful not to lose them. Using a driver rather than pliers here makes this much easier. We will be using the nuts and washers later, so put them in the dish as they come off. With the nuts removed, gently pull the screen up and carefully dump the nylon washers into your hand and put them in the dish. Congratulations, the screen is now removed. Now we can begin the assembly. We'll put the switchboard, screen, and panel mount together. These will all fit under the frame, like so. We'll need four quarter inch screws and the four nuts and washers we just retained from the screen. The first screw can be a bit tricky as the parts are small. Put the screen's green PCB on top of the blue switchboard. Put a screw through the hole, add a washer, and get the nut started. Be mindful of the display connector as it can swish around and knock parts around when you are putting things together. Finish the nut with the driver. If you tighten it too much, you may want to back it off a bit so it's not super tight. The next screw is a bit easier since you don't have to hold the parts together. Drive in the nut, 
and then finish tightening the first one we did. Next is the display panel mount. The back is labeled bottom, so make sure that it is down. Put the green board of the display on top of the blue panel mount. Add the final two screws, nuts, and washers to finish the screen panel assembly. We are ready to install the Program Manager card as a daughter card into the easel and mount the display in place of the program interface port. Clear your area and bring the easel front and center. We will remove all 10 panel screws and the two program interface screws. Keep your dish handy so you don't lose these things. When you remove the module, be mindful of the connections inside. Tip the top of the module towards you so you have slack on the power board connections, and then you can prop the module on top of the case. Now remove the two ribbon cables used for the program interface. It can be a bit tricky removing this part. I found it easiest to manipulate it while the board is upside down and push and work the part through the faceplate. Be patient and you'll get it through. Put the part aside for storage as we won't be needing it now. Get your two half inch standoffs ready as we are going to install the card. This particular easel is a revision seven. You can see your revision number here in the top middle of this board. Most easels have three screws to remove, but my Rev7 only has two. The third would be here. Once I remove these screws, we'll need these two half inch standoffs for mounting the program manager board. There is already a standoff for the third screw in revision eight and above. You can hand tighten these. You don't want to torque them down too much as that could crack the board. Grab the program manager card to install it. We'll be mating these two headers together. They have a key and there's really only one way to orient this so it's simple to get right. Pinch the headers together and make sure it's a good fit. You'll know because these two cards will be at the same level. Now we'll use the short screws we originally removed at the beginning and screw them into the standoffs. It's time to put the faceplate on the button array. We'll need the half inch header, the 3 16th inch screws, two 3 quarter inch screws, our four retaining washers, the ones with the plus in the middle, two nylon spacers, and two quarter inch nylon standoffs. Grab the short header, place it on the switchboard, then use a 3 16th inch screw to attach it to the middle of the switchboard. Put a screw through the faceplate, then put the nylon standoff on the screw, sandwiched between the faceplate and screen assembly. Add the spacer and the two retaining washers. You may need to use your screwdriver to get the retainers down as they have a tight fit. Repeat for the other side. Finish off with the small screw on the faceplate. You happen to lose one of these screws, this is a good one to leave off as it doesn't really provide much structure.
Now we are finally ready to finish this up. Flip the module over, mimicking my orientation so you don't get caught in the cables. Run the display connector through the face. We'll add the ribbon cable to the keyed header. There's only one way this can go in because of the key. Run the ribbon through the faceplate and use the 3 quarter inch screws to mount the screen assembly. Flip the board over and connect the screen to the program manager card. As you have practiced, this should now be easy. Connect the ribbon cable to the card. Turn the module over. First, tilt the top edge, then work the cables into the case. Then complete the assembly with the panel screws. You will have one left over as the last screw is obscured by the screen assembly. Now you are ready to use the program manager embedded into your easel command. You will probably find this arrangement is much easier and more enjoyable to use for making great sounds and music with your Buchla easel command.